Hello, and welcome to the Patricia Creighton Show. Who's joining us tonight is Mayor and writer of children's book, Kimberly D. Worthy. Yes. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. Kimberly, you brought your mom down with you. I did. That's wonderful. And in the dedication on your book, you dedicated to her being always supportive of all yes. your all your projects and endeavors. And you see, she's supporting me today. She's here. That's wonderful. Yes. That's great. What? How did you get inspiration to read this, to write this book? It's a very interesting story. It started when I was in middle school. My teacher gave us vocabulary words that happened to be poetry concepts, poetry words. Mm -hmm. Back then, the internet wasn't like it is today, so we had to go to the library and use encyclopedias. So I researched the poetry words and I made a poetry book. Now, I didn't know that my school was um, having a poetry book competition with other schools in the Atlanta public school system. Mm -hmm. My teacher entered my book and it won first prize. So I was, awesome. yes. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> I was elated, but I didn't think anything of it. You know, I was 12, 13, mm -hmm. so it sat dormant for years. Now recently, I talked with my mentor, who's Dan Moore Sr. He's the founder of the Apex Museum here in Atlanta. Okay. And I told him, I said, Mr. Moore, I would like to become an author. And of course, he wants to know, could you write? I was like, yes, I actually can write. <laughs> so I showed him my book for middle school. And he read through it. He was like, Kimberly, this is really good. He um, encouraged me to revamp it, mm -hmm. do some changes, and publish it. And that's how we came with poetry is not just rhyming. Okay, mm -hmm. now that's very interesting. The Apex Museum, mm -hmm. tell our viewers, I know even though we are in Atlanta, just like any other place that have attractions, you never go to them. Yes, that's so I mean, true. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, 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 Shame. it's sad, it's awful, yes. but I love museums and I have been to the Apex several mm -hmm. times. When I first came to Atlanta, we had, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and we, we had great museums there, Case Western Reserve and all these different things, and the auto museum. So that was one of the things that I've always, you know, did. So when I came, first came to Atlanta, one of the first places I went was the Apex Museum. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. And they had, we were sitting in the gym, they had the program going in front of us and everything, mm -hmm. and showing about slavery, so. Yes. Um, tell everybody about the Apex Museum. Well, the Apex Museum is actually located at 135 Auburn Avenue. It's the only African American History Museum in Atlanta that's dedicated solely to that purpose. APES stands for African American Panoramic Experience. So we show you our journey in Africa to America and where we are, where we are today. And we never start talking about history with slavery. Because it's sad, a lot of kids come into the museum and think we started as slaves. And we want you to know we started as kings and queens in Africa. And that's what the Apex main mission is to, you know, empower the community on. That's great. That's and awesome. you say the, you, he's your mentor, what is his name? Yes, Dan Moore Sr. And he's your mentor? Yes, he founded the museum in 1978. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you've been mentored on, on the subject of writing or what? Basically on just becoming a better, better human being. Okay, okay. So he encouraged me to live out my passions. I actually do marketing at the Apex Museum. And so he helps me with the marketing aspect and just learning how to do press releases, to learning how to write books okay. and become a public speaker. Okay. So I'm just following his footsteps. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about poetry is not just rhyming. Yes. How did you come up with that title? Well, I was actually talking to a little girl one day and I asked her to, asked her to write me a poem. And she wrote a really cute little poem, like Roses Are Red. It is rhyming. And I said, this is cute. Let me write you a poem. And I wrote her a haiku. Mm -hmm. Now, haikus are poems that consist of three lines. And the first line has five syllables, the second line seven syllables, and the third line five syllables. Mm -hmm. So I read her the poem, and she said, this isn't a poem. I said, it is a poem. Why is it in a poem? She said, because it doesn't rhyme. Right. And I said, poetry is not just rhyming. And it clicked. I said, that's it. I know the book. Poetry is not just rhyming. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So... In the, I know you have more books inside of you that you'll be writing for the children. Yes. Uh, tell, why would it, is this for any particular grade that would read this poetry? I say book? from 5 to 12 because it's actually a coloring book as well. Oh. Because oh. kids color, but I want them to not only color, but pay attention to what you're coloring. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say from 5 to 12. And the concepts in the book are very advanced. Like I go over sync canes and sonnets. And these are things that kids usually learn in high school or sometimes college. But I would like for them to be prepared once they get to that stage. Like what you were talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
introduce it to them early so it won't be so foreign when they get to the stage like I don't understand what's a ballad what is that so from 5 to 12 years they can really comprehend and understand the book okay so there are different forms of poetry I'm learning yes. I like alliteration and metaphors and actually okay let's take a one at a time okay. okay let me talk about personification okay that's like giving something that's not human human characteristics <laughs> mm -hmm. so I can say um that microphone um, that microphone something. Let me think of something. Give it like a human characteristic. It's a puppy. Wag its tail like a puppy. Yeah, something like something well, like uh, the 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 camera <laughs> saw or it it, it yes. looked. You know, uh -huh. and so now you know the camera can't really look. Yeah, that's what its job is. And I mm -hmm. love poetry. I'm yes. actually a former English teacher. Yeah, so uh -huh. I taught middle school English oh, and wow. high school okay. American okay. literature. Okay. So. When she's talking about, I just get excited. <laughs> it is excited about hyper. <laughs> so that's like personification, or we can talk about a metaphor, comparing two unlike things without using a word like or as. You know, your eyes are beautiful, your eyes are water, you're something like that. So it creates an image in your head. And people say these concepts all the time. Mm -hmm. They don't realize it's poetry. Mm -hmm. And I think this book is very powerful because this generation, most of the kids I talk with, they love like rappers, Jay-Z and Lil Wayne. A lot of their lyrics are poetry. It's, poem, yes, <laughs> it's just different yes. forms of it. Yes. And once kids can understand that, they can realize I don't have to just be a rapper. I can be an English teacher yes. or I can be a politician. Mm -hmm. Look at Johnny Cochran. If the glove doesn't fit, it must acquit. Why does that stick out? Because it rhymes and it's poetry. Mm -hmm. But like I said, all poetry is not rhyming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's even almost to me as if you say poetry, like the days of the week is like poetry to me. You know, mm -hmm. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yes. We got songs out. Yes, you know, that's the, so true. The little rhymes with the songs mm -hmm. and the days of the week and mm -hmm. the summer, spring, winter, yes. fall. You know? mm -hmm. and so this is, this is interesting. Yes. I'm learning. So <laughs> we've got two different types of poetry or three? Oh, oh so wow. So we go over at least like, about... By Eight. 14 in this book. Like, really? Mm -hmm. that's, that's yes. Like, oh, okay, you got it on the... Uh... On page, let's see, it's right before page one. My table of contents. Right. Okay. Oh, these are all... Oh, okay. Yeah, those are all types. those. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, free verse. Free verse doesn't really have a set pattern. It's just like spoken word. Like, if you go to a cafe and someone's just speaking, that's more like free verse poetry. It's just all over the place. There's no... Set. Yeah. Okay. So what what are what are what are the rappers? What type of poetry are the rappers doing? Some rappers do free verse like freestyling. Freestyle is like a form of free verse poetry. So they'll give you a word and then they make it. And I bust. It's a hyperbole poem. Mm -hmm. Or onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is basically giving sounds to something like tap, tap, tap goes my foot. I tap, tap, tap my hands. That's onomatopoeia. Okay, is that this long one spell? Yes. Yeah, the O. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I do have pronunciations um, under each poem in the book so okay. people can understand. Okay. That's good I because I've never, I, I, I've never known of none of this. Mm -hmm. Lyric poems. <laughs> yeah. It's like a song. Well, a ballad is more like a song. Ballad, okay, okay. Yeah, so we, I mean, we go over These everything. Names, uh, one of your goals is to get this book in the public schools. Yes, okay. as a companion book. I remember when I was in school, we had a... Uh, you know, textbook, but then we had a sheet of paper that had a list of books mm -hmm. that you would go out and buy mm -hmm. to help you once you get That's to that correct. subject. And I would love for this book to be a companion book to the already books in the school system. Okay, mm -hmm. this is great. And so, uh, let's go with sonnets. A sonnet is a 14 line poem. Mm -hmm. 14 who? Line. 14 okay. line poem. Okay. This should be the last poem in the book. Okay. And I love Sonnets because just the name just makes me think of Stevie Wonder because his lyrics are just so powerful. And I don't know, Sonnets are usually, to me, more romantic. But of course, this is a children's book. But I just basically went over the concept of how you can write a sonnet about anything. And that's the whole purpose of this book. You can write a poem about anything. If you're having a bad day, mm -hmm. you might say, hmm, let me write a concrete poem about my bad day. And concrete poetry are actually pictures. It's like a poem that's written yes. like a picture. So if I'm writing about a rabbit, I would write my poem and it'll look like a rabbit. You got one here, uh, most girls' favorite. Oh. <laughs> Not one of mine. I really don't like the shop. You know? Mm. Wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So mm -hmm. shopping. Mm -hmm. How about reading that before me? Okay. Shopping is one of my favorite things to do. I do it almost every weekend. I like to buy things that are new, but I don't like people to sneak in. When I go to the mall, I look at the clothes, 
I walk, I walk down the hall, I buy my shoes at Lowe's. After that, I go to the food court and buy me something to eat. I look at the entire sort of delicious treats. Well, it's time to leave. It's so good being me. Yes, and you can color in the picture of the young lady shopping. Yes, mm -hmm. she got her bag in her hand. And I also have pages inside the book for kids to create their own poems. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like a, like you said, working along with the, yes. the class. With the, uh, mm -hmm. yes, okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay. And you do, you, you've done signings there also? Yes, I've done signings there. I had a real big sign on August 20th at the Apex Museum. I had a sign in two days ago um, at another location that my book is so loud. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So... The apex, the, the traffic at the apex is, is a good traffic. Yes, we have a lot of school groups and church groups that come by. Um, so we have a lot of kids, but we always, you know, welcome in more visitors to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, it's so so much artifacts that from the past that you have there that we can mm -hmm. actually see yes. the things that they've used, you know, mm -hmm. back in the day and everything. That's so and, true. And then, uh, like you said, now the computers have, and the iPad and all these drawings yes. and illustrations yes. and things. It's amazing. So now, to publish a book, oh, they got a picture of you so cute on the oh. back when she was 12 years old. Oh, she yeah, that's kid. when I wrote the book. <laughs> yeah, I pretty so much look the same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> those eyes, you can't yeah. get away from those eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, to publish, you got it together and you took it to a publishing house. No, I self-published my own book. Oh. So I have a publishing company um, called Denise Talor Publishing Company. I'm also a songwriter as well. So I just publish all my stuff under my songwriting company, Denise How did Talor. you get it in the, in the book form? What I mean is what oh, I a mean. distributor. So okay. you can contact a distributor. I see. Mm -hmm. So that's how, and if someone has an idea to do a book, they can yes. write it, mm -hmm. go to a publishing company, or find out how to do it themselves mm -hmm. as you did, mm -hmm. and then yes. take it to a distributor that would actually yes. print it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have to have someone proofread and stuff? Well, I proofed it myself. Okay. I mean, I'm an English minor. My, my um, minor in college was English language and literature. Mm -hmm. And I'm a part of Sigma Tau Delta International English Fraternity. So I proofed my own book. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking with Kimberly D. Worthy and um, Rice, she's a writer and publisher mm -hmm. of her poetry is not just rhyming. And the different types of poetry that I had no idea. No idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. I should have paid attention in school when I say. So tell us, Kimberly D. Worthy, what other books are inside of you that you would like to bring out of? Well, I think I want to tackle another complex concept. I don't know if I want my second book to be about poetry, but I want to get something that people usually learn in college and simplify for elementary school students. Mm -hmm. uh, who, did you tell me who inspired you on writing this book? Um. Really, I didn't really have one inspiration writing the book. I just always love to read and just research. So once I received those vocabulary words and I didn't understand what the words meant, I just could not sleep not knowing what something means. So I just went to the library and just mm -hmm. did it. So I guess I was my own inspiration yes. just being inquisitive. And just writing a book now, Mr. Moore inspired this book right here. But the original book was just... What's in the future for you, uh, Kimberly D? Well, to continue to write books and songs and just promote myself as a brand. So I do a lot of things. I just want to get myself out there. Okay, you said you write songs. Well, have you written any songs? Or? Yes. Back in 2009. In 2009, I had five songs co-written and published on an R&B artist album. So I was happy about that. That's my first professional songwriting credit. And right now, I have a demo album that's trying to get that out there as well. You sing also? I do sing, okay. but now I'm a songwriter. I'm an actress more so than a singer.